we'll begin working on the glossy materials by simplifying things. So when we look at the reference, you can see the black shaders we have at the windows, dining table and the chairs here is I think the most dominant color. So it's going to be the first one we'll go with. And then we will move to this nice white areas here as well as here in the kitchen and on the, those bar stools. So you can see the same pattern. We are going from the biggest details to the smallest, which will be those little handles here, for example, the metallic shaders around the appliances and yeah, perhaps something else, the handles here and so on. Let's just begin. I will create a new black glossy shader for our table. So I'm going to delete the defu uh, default Choco 4 shader and create glossy black material. I'm going to change the viewport display to something darker, but not too dark like this because it doesn't, it, sometimes when you have to edit objects like that and you have very dark look like this, you don't see edges or anything, so it's not helpful. Anyways, let's just keep it like this. Create a region around this area, switch to rendered view. And let's now start setting up the material. I'm going to go with color first. So let's set it up to 0 0.75, which is, I would say max. If you want to have dark object, let's reduce the roughness. Actually, let's check the reference first. So I see the roughness here is pretty much diffused. Let's keep it at 0.4 maybe. And to be honest with you, that, that might be it can see the sun shining through the glass but if we increase the specular I think it becomes too reflective so maybe 0.75 will be enough let's now apply the same shader to the chairs so we have two materials here a metallic and this very glossy black one so I'm again gonna remove both of them create a new material slot and just type black here to find my shader. Let's switch back to the camera view and see how it looks. I think it's fine to be honest. Perhaps we can change the roughness just a little bit to make the reflections more diffused. And as you remember from the modeling stage, we already had another black material created around our window frame. So let's call it window black. Let's see the settings here. We could reduce the roughness just a little bit. I'm doing this out of my head because when we look at the references, I think those elements have just a little bit more reflectivity than the table and, and chairs. So let's see how it looks so as a default material it's not bad but again i would suggest increasing the specularity just a little bit and we will now have to apply the same shader to the window frames so let's try selecting one of the window objects we had i think it's hard and if we enter the edit mode, let's see what kind of shader divisions we have here. So this is the material that's giving us this little bit of uh, metallic touch within the window, like here. So I would keep it untouched just so we have this extra level of detail within the object. But this black shader is a rubber element we can actually keep it as well. So we are gonna change this main frame shader only. The one we have here as the first one is the glass shader we are not using any longer. We can simply remove it and replace the first shader with the window black. So now we have to do this to every single element around our scene. 
I'm gonna be back to you once it's done. And the windows are all done now. Let's just do a quick preview to see how they look like. And yeah, I think we are getting much closer to the actual look we were aiming at from the very beginning. One thing I wanna mention at this point is you don't have to set up materials only after you know, those many steps we have already taken. You could easily have done some very basic rough materials earlier to help you, for example, make a composition better or put your camera around the scene easier. The course that I'm doing, the steps that I'm showing you is the general process where I don't wanna to mix too many topics at the same time. So that's why we were focusing on modeling. Now we are setting up the materials but again you could mix those steps when working on your own projects so for example you could have changed the window look already after adding them to the scene you could you could have changed this material this material much earlier um, let's now move to setting up this white uh, counter here and the bar stools we have just next to it Oh wow, we are back to this camera again. Let's just do a quick preview right now before we added the glossy white materials. And you can see we have this funny situation happening around this area. And the reason for that we have our grill shrinked is because we didn't set up the gloss glass IOR to one. So you can see now in a practical example, why do I think having this setting Disabled for the glasses is recommended. But anyway, let's get back to setting up the white glossy shaders. I'm just hiding the furnishings. And from this perspective, I really like the white material we have here around the bar stool. So let's see which shader that is. Okay, and it's selected by default. I'm gonna rename it to glossy white and simply apply the same material to the counter we have here. After I've done that, let me switch back to this camera again and render this region here. So you can see the shader looks actually very close to what we have here in the reference perhaps is a little bit too reflective at this angle so let's let's fix that i don't want to change the way shader looks on the bar stools already so i'm gonna click this icon here to make it local and aligned to this object only let's call it glossy white table zero one and i'm gonna reduce the roughness of that material 2.3 maybe so when we look at the reference we can see this area is way less glossy than the upper one so now we have this nice look here but we have lost our well nice reflective surface at top so let's add another material slot find our previous material, which is glossy white. Now I'm gonna enter the edit mode and by pointing my mouse uh, cursor over the counter, I'm gonna press L key and now assign the glossy white shader to the selection. So you can see we now have a very, very nice counter created. Uh, the other materials, sorry, the other objects that will bear the same material will be the kitchen details here so i can simply select our kitchen element just double checking in the wireframe view and replace this material by glossy white shader So as you can see for the main glossy elements and materials, there wasn't really that much setup. The shaders themselves are very easy in my opinion. We can simply use 
principal BSDF shader as here and here and simply control the look within our scene with the specular and roughness sliders. So I would end this video here, perhaps uh, just as a final touch, I will increase the glossy white specularity to 0.75. And in the next video for this step, we will just set up the very little, little details like the handles and simplify the lamps here just a bit. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I begin my work on those final little materials, starting with the counter elements. So we can see those little handles here. They have the default white material and in our references we can see this metallic shader. So I'm going to cover the metallic shaders separately, but let's do one as a warm up right now. Let's call it metal base 01. Perhaps we're going to have more of these and the base setup for a metallic shader. It's qu quite simple. We just increase the metallic value here reduce the roughness to, let's say, 0.2, leave the specular as default. But what I suggest doing is changing the viewport color, just so we know those elements have a different shader applied. So I'm gonna point my mouse cursor over them and press L to link select, and I'm gonna assign a new shader. So you can see it's already visible. Let's maybe hide everything just for a better preview. And I'm gonna do the same here as well. And that's basically it, to be honest. Now we're gonna have to do exactly the same thing around this model, so I'm gonna speed that up. With those tiny little details set up, I'm gonna now move to fine tuning these lamps because they don't look exactly as in the reference, but it's gonna be a quick process. And you have also noticed probably I've added this little touch here we've missed during the modeling process. So let's now get into the lamps. This time the simplification process will be quite drastic. We're gonna remove almost everything. Let's use one of our glossy black shaders. Maybe this one, except not the one from the windows. And I'm gonna enter the edit mode, switch to the wireframe and select the cable, the main, well, attachment elements and apply the black shader to them. Let's remove those shaders now and see what we have left. This shader here is a glass, so we're gonna leave it. This is the metal shader and this is the emission shader. So I'm gonna select this emission shader. We are not gonna emit any light from this element and I'm gonna apply this metallic shader to it. So now everything here is metal. I'm gonna remove this blank material and we are gonna have nicely set up lamps. Um, let's maybe fine tune their geometry just a little bit. I'm gonna focus my camera from the side view, switch to the vertices and just shrink this entire element a little bit, just like this. And I would also adjust the cable a little bit because we can see in the reference it has a little bit of noise in its shape. It's not perfectly straight as in our example. And to randomize a shape like this, there is a small trick you could use. Let's switch to the edge selection mode, go to the wireframe, select just these edges. 
So remember not to select the bottom ones. We are gonna right click and choose subdivision tool, go to the 10 cuts. And now with the fractal slider here, you can see we are able to add this kind of random noise to the object. 0 0.07, it's way too high, so let's try 0 0.02. I think it's maybe not enough. Let's try 35. I think that's too much. So I, I guess if we if we just keep it at three and then the subdivision modifier kicks in, um, I think it, it's gonna look pretty nice. Yeah, so you can see we have this thickness differentiation. It looks like a little bit as here in the reference, a small touch. Uh, again, this kind of details that I mentioned, that if there are in the scene, you probably never notice them, but if that line was completely straight in the rendering, uh, you would feel there's something artificial happening. So I would say, as for the glossy shaders, as for the general setup of those kind of shaders, we are basically at home. I don't know if I can say that, sorry. that My English is not perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, still I would set up the bulbs, the bulb material here. So let's very quickly do that. Um, it's this yellowy choco for glass basic shader. So let's check our reference very quickly. Here we can see, yeah, the glass is basically almost fully transparent. So we just need to change the saturation of the shadow here and the main color as well. If we just make them completely white then everything is solved. Again, let's just keep the IOR value at one so we have no distortion within those elements. Let's maybe go a little bit lower with the color. So maybe again, 0.95. Yeah, I, I think it looks good. The, the reason of setting it up below purely white is you can see here, the bulb is bar barely visible, so it might not look good in the rendering. That's why I, just for the safety reasons, let's say, keep it below the perfectly white color. So this is our setup. Let's now move to the metallic shaders at last. And then we are gonna fine tune everything and get ready for the real rendering stuff. So thank you for watching again and see you in the metallic shader section. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofor store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.